So Square Enix came out today with a quote-unquote aggressive new strategy for their games moving forward. And you know what it is? To stop putting them on one platform. At launch, anyway. Who knew you would kill your profits by limiting your games to one platform? Let's talk about it. Stream Daring Work here, where I give you all sorts of content to get you through your work day. And I'm back with some news about one of my favorite publishers in the land, Square Enix. Now, Square Enix, unfortunately, has had some bad news, and I'm going to refer to an IGN article here. But let's start at the top. And I'll put this down in the comments, description, whatever at the bottom. Square Enix has announced a significant company reboot amid tumbling profits. Reporting its financial performance for the financial year ending March 31st, 2024, sales in the digital entertainment segment, which includes video games, rose by 2.6%, but profit fell by 15.8%. This despite the sale of Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster, Foam Stars, my favorite, and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Specifically on HD games, the subcategory Square Enix uses to encompass all the above games, the company saw a significant operating loss of 8.1 billion yen, which is 51.9 million in pounds and USD in, in straight cash, homie, right? So anyway, Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth both launched as PlayStation 5 exclusives, and while Square Enix has announced sales figure for Final Fantasy 16, it has yet to do so for Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, the second game in the company's trilogy of Final Fantasy 7 remakes. In its financial report, all Square Enix would say is it has suffered from a quote, incomplete journey to better profitability, profitability, can say that, in HD game development, unquote, and that it had launched many titles, but some failed to live up to profit expectations, especially outsourced titles and some AAA titles. It seems likely Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, at least, is included in that. So, man, that's a lot to digest right there. But basically, they're saying that the Final Fantasies that are money-hatted by Sony are not making the money back that they should. And so Sony is, is handing them a bag for exclusivity. That's what they're doing. But even after they take the bag, they're not getting the sales that will help with the bag to go back and make the money that they expected. Now, is it corporate greed? Is the budget just outlandish? I don't really know. It's very clear, though, that Square wants to get away from that. And this is exactly what they said about their new strategy moving forward. In response to the tumbling profit, Square Enix announced what it calls Square Enix Reboots and Awakens. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? A three-year plan for rebooting for long-term growth. This involves a rethink across all parts of the business, but the highlight is a shift to a multi-platform strategy. Square Enix said it will aggressively pursue a multi-platform strategy that includes Nintendo platforms, PlayStation, Xbox, and PCs. Note the wording here of Nintendo platforms, with Nintendo going to announce the Switch, successor, yada yada. As part of this multi-platform push, Square Enix said it will build an environment where more customers can enjoy our titles in regards to major franchises and AAA titles, including catalog titles. The suggestion in all this is mainline Final Fantasy games. We'll ditch PlayStation exclusivity going forward, although Square Enix has yet to announce specifics beyond Final Fantasy 16's upcoming launch on PC. There's also a shift from quantity to quality, Square Enix said, and a bid to deliver, quote, insured fun 
Square Enix has been accused of pumping out too many Final Fantasy games in too short a timeline, so perhaps this means the release of major Final Fantasy games will be spaced out a bit more. And it goes into a little bit more of the actual losses that they have. And I want to question something really quick. I don't think there's enough Final Fantasy games. So I'm not in I'm not on the fence. Um, or one of those picketers that's saying too many Final Fantasy games. If if you agree with me, let me know down there at the bottom. But let's take all of this in, okay? So very clearly and simply put, Sony is losing exclusivity on Square's games. And I mean, this is where games have to go if they want to grow. And I didn't mean to sound all cool when I said that. But Square can't make its money back just by staying on Sony. Sony throws millions of dollars at them to get exclusivity. They have to. But even after that, Final Fantasy games are big, but they're not as big as other games. They still have a market that is smaller than, say, God of War and definitely Spider-Man, using Sony as in their exclusives here as an example. The remake sold for around $7 million in totality. So, Final Fantasy VII Remake, all of its copies across PC, PlayStation 4, Intergrad, Intergrade, whatever you say there. I looked this up and it was $7 million as of September 23. And now let's just say more came in there, but $8 million. Let's just give it $8 million, okay? That is still significantly lower than what God of War Ragnarok did. God of War Ragnarok is sitting around 15 million. God of War 2018 is around 20 million. So then if you go and look at Spider-Man, that's even bigger. I think Spider-Man, as recent of a couple months ago, in its time, has already sold 20, 25 million. So Final Fantasy is a smaller game a smaller AAA when it comes to those. And then if you're limiting your market to just the PlayStation base, and then after a few months putting it on PC, you're never going to make your money back. So what they're doing is, and what we're going to see, is a lot like Final Fantasy 13. if you guys remember that stuff. That thing rolled out on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And it's going to be the same way moving forward. There's going to be a Switch 2 version of these games. There's going to be an Xbox version of these games. There's going to be PlayStation. And there's going to be a day and date on PC. If I was Square, that's exactly what I would do. Because if you can put this on more platforms, you're going to make more money. <laughs> I mean, that's not like, like I didn't get a business degree. I'm just telling you, that's what they have to do. And so... I'm curious if Final Fantasy is going to start rolling into Game Pass with as volatile as Xbox is right now. I I don't know if they'll take another bag from them and then put it on the Xbox system. I, I don't know. I don't know if they'll do that or not. But Final Fantasy 16 is coming to Xbox here soon. And if I remember correctly, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth has limited exclusivity, not the full type of exclusivity that Remake had. And speaking of that too, I don't know if Remake even has the potential to make its way to an Xbox platform or a Nintendo platform. I don't know what kind of exclusivity they have, meaning PlayStation. I don't think it would be lifetime, but crazier things have happened. I would love for these games to come to Xbox and Nintendo. I think it makes the most sense. Final Fantasy 3, which is 6, my first experience with a Final Fantasy game was exclusive to Super Nintendo back in the day. So I would love to see them come back. And like, just look at one of the other things they said too. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. There was no reason for that thing to skip Xbox, but it did. Like, why, why would you do that? Anyway, I digress. I think that Square firmly realizes that they have to open up the floodgates here and put all of their titles on every platform. 
Look at Capcom as the model. Capcom puts all of their stuff everywhere, and Capcom has been making bukus of money every single year with that strategy. And so Square's followed suit. I hope this stuff rolls out on Game Pass, but I don't know if it will. I'm excited for it to be on Switch too. I don't know if we'll get Switch. But I want to know what you guys think about this news that came out with Square. Does this hurt Sony with being able to money hat some exclusives? Will we get the full trilogy on Xbox? Will we get the full trilogy on Switch? I don't know. Strange times, man. Game industry is changing, and I'm about to cough, so I'm going to get out of here. <coughs>